Yo, 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 what's going on, family? How's everybody doing? We are here live on TariqEliteRadio.com and the live Tariq show on Ustream. Glad to have everybody tuning in. Just getting everything back to popping right about now. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody had a great weekend. I uh, put up a link for everybody. You can get those new Crispy Puppet t-shirts. They're available now. by They're backed by popular demand. People were hounding me about merchandise for the Crispy Puppet because the Crispy Puppet show has become so popular. We don't have a new episode this week, but the Crispy Puppet show has become so popular and people have been asking me about merchandise. So we have now provided some crispy t-shirts you guys can get the email well the web address to get the crispy shirts cute kid they got them for you you can get them for the kids for them the wife the the girlfriend guys can get it we got hoodies sweaters the whole shebang you can get that at cafepress.com slash crispy puppet and if you follow me on twitter i posted a picture <laughs> nice shirts, real good looking shirts. Cafepress.com slash crispy puppet. Rock your crispy shirt, ladies and gentlemen. You want to rock your crispy shirt. And it's getting a little chilly, so you want to rock your crispy hoodies. You know, get get bundled up, ladies and gentlemen. So how how's everybody doing this weekend? Uh, I mean, I've been on medication, taking gout medicine and all types of shit, so I'm a little flighty right now. Just a slight little headache, but I'm good. I feel like I've been traveling. I feel like I'm jet lagged or something. Uh, um, yeah, Bill, they they still hit me up and all that stuff. Yes, indeed. So we got all the the crispy gear. Oh, you gotta rock your crispy shirt. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen. If you rock your crispy shirt this week and send me a picture, I will post it up on my Instagram. We're going to get like a whole Instagram hashtag of the crispy puppet. So you'll reach thousands of people. Get your crispy puppet shirt this week. Take a picture in the shirt. I I'll even put it on Twitter. I got over 100,000 Twitter followers. I'll post it all on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram so we can... Get it popping with the crispy shirt. We'll have the crispy hats later on this week. So get your crispy shirt tonight. And that's at cafepress.com slash crispy puppet. You dig? I got to get a, uh, the website for the crispy puppet too. All my web designers, hit me up, man, at um, kflexforlife at yahoo.com. kflexforlife at yahoo.com. My, my web guys, so they can say hairline sold separately. <laughs> Shout out to Griff. He said, what's my thoughts on Professor Griff saying King Noble's an, an agent? I've been saying that. I've been saying that. I've been, somebody else sent me the link of that. I've been saying that. Okay, Peanut's hitting me up. Hold on. Hold on one second. Peanut's, she just got here, but I'm doing my show. She wants me to get TJ. Um, but yeah, that, that, that King Noble Coon, he's an, uh, it's not even a secret he's an agent. As a matter of fact, I think they want us to know that he's an agent. He, he's a nobody. Trust me, he's nobody. He's a complete nobody. But I think they, they want us to know that he's an agent. It, it's so blatantly obvious that that dude's an agent. You dig? And, I mean, he just literally causes a lot of disruptions within the so-called conscious community. But, yeah, he's clearly, that's not even, you know, either he's a real bad agent or they want you to know that he's one. Because nobody can be that blatantly obvious. You dig? I don't know, Jay, when I'm going to start the lecture tour. I'm going to keep people posted on that. I'm going to keep people posted on that. 
What's up, Harlem? I heard about it. I, I didn't want to see it. I heard about um, the Super Coon going on um, white supremacist shows, talking about black folks. I mean, he's a coon. So what, what, I mean, what else is new? He's just doing what a coon does. I'm not shocked. Anything he does, I'm not shocked. Not shocked at all. Oh, yeah, the new Black Panther movie is coming out. I want to check that out. They got my man who played um, James Brown, and he played um, Jackie Robinson. That guy's a great actor. That guy's a great actor, the brother who played James Brown. If you haven't seen the James Brown movie, the movie Get On Up, that brother did an excellent job, man. So that's a good choice for Black Panther. Hopefully it ain't on no bullshit. You know, hopefully, you know, it ain't on no bullshit. I, I like to see how they let the character get down. You dig? Because when it comes to, like, comic book characters and science fiction and stuff like that with us, you know, when we in it, it it's they, they pull a lot of real janky shit. I was looking at, well, my, my daughter was looking at this show on Netflix called The First 100, something like that. It was like some show. Y'all heard about it? The one, the First 100, it's about, and I just saw like half of an episode where they're up in this spaceship and then a hundred people get sent to Earth. It looked kind of interesting. The acting was a little dry. And it was 100 people sent to Earth. What's that, the name of the show? It was a show, it looked like some type of NBC show. I don't know. And it was like this brother. It's, they supposed to be in the future and all. There was one black dude and the white people kept beating the black dude up. I'm like, all right. All right. They, they were losing me on that. It's on the CW? Yeah, the 100. It's a CW show. But they kept beating this one brother up. I'm like, okay, this brother got his ass whooped by too many people. I don't like this shit. They got like a handful of brothers in the future and one of them getting his ass kicked. So I'm like, okay, I'm cool on this. Oh, they already changed it where he's not the king of Wakanda? Because you got to understand, man, those, those comic book geeks and all that, there's a lot of white supremacy in that whole comic book world. There's a lot of white supremacy in that comic book world. They're just like T-Dog in The Walking Dead. Exactly. Even the dude who plays Tyrese in The Walking Dead, they got this big nigga playing a damn babysitter every week. He's the biggest. They always do that. They get the biggest brother in the bunch and he's playing the damn babysitter. So, hopefully, you know, they, the, the Black Panther movie, I hope they keep it fly. I hope they keep it fly. Now, speaking of movies, I want you guys to go see this movie that, that came out, um, Nightcrawler. Me and Pino, we saw that last night with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's a movie called Nightcrawler. Good movie. Jake Gyllenhaal did a very good job. Who? Anybody seen that movie? But... This movie is very interesting, and I don't want to give too many spoilers about the movie, but in this movie, Jake Gyllenhaal, he's kind of this loser dude, you know, thief, a loner, he's like a morally bankrupt type dude, and yeah, I'm going to talk about that street harassment in a minute, but Jake Gyllenhaal, he plays this guy, you know, he's a kind of a fast talker, you know, he talks, he's a real slick <clears throat> kind of dude, slick meaning like a, like a con man, thief type of dude, but low level though, very low level, and you know, he's broke, and he's trying to kind of talk himself into a job or whatever, and he stumbles upon a job as a crime scene videographer, almost like a paparazzi, but he um, gets to crime scenes 
film the footage, and sells it to news outlets. So he kind of stumbles up on this. And while do, while learning the ropes of this, he, he meets up with this... I'm no, I'm no spoilers. I'm, I'm just talking... I'm just setting it up about what the film is about. That's just the basic gist of what the film is about. I'm not going to give no spoilers. But some interesting things in the film. One interesting thing, uh, he's talking to this female producer at a news station trying to give her footage and she was like look basically the footage we need what sells is white victims and minority suspects that's what's going to sell that's what we want you to bring we want some in in good neighborhoods white victims minority suspects that's what we need you dig and that was very interesting that they would get down like that. They would admit that because that's exactly how they get down in real life. That's where that whole street harassment thing came. That's how they sold it. That whole street harassment with the... And that's how they were eventually going to sell it in order to monetize it. But, okay, let, look, don't let trolls get y'all into sideline conversations. Don't let any trolls get you into sideline conversations. Don't let the trolls get you into sideline conversations. Talking about how come we don't talk about this group. You ain't going to do shit about it, either group we talk about. If we do talk about them, you're not going to do shit about them anyway. So let's stop with that trolling argument. You're not going to do anything about any group we talk about. But I get on that street harassment nonsense in a in a minute. The anti racism. I I do need to come to the UK. I do want to come to the UK. Y'all gotta holler at me. But look, look, my thing is this: family, 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 family. When it comes to doing business, and let me talk specifically to black folks, black people, you gotta kind of get to the point when it comes to doing business. You got to get to the point when it comes to doing business. I'm going to get on, remind me of that too. I'm going to get on that Lena Dunham, that chick, she's a, a white feminist and she admitted to like molesting her sister or something like that. I'm like, you know, when, when people are always projecting and pointing the finger at somebody else, usually that's a way for them to get the focus off themselves. But let me say this, like I was saying, a lot of us black folks, when it comes to doing business, you got to get into the habit of getting to the point. Black folks got a bad habit of planning shit and never executing nothing. Or pretending to plan stuff. A lot of black folks think that planning something is actually accomplishing something. You dig? So this is why, look, because the word is, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get ready to go on a tour, on a lecture tour. And then a lot of people start hitting me up about coming to their schools and colleges and universities. And this is something that's a real big pet peeve of mine. And I, I don't like when people do it. Don't email me over and over again, talking about you planning on getting it together. I Only email me when you're ready to roll. I had to email, respond today to somebody. Only email me when you got money in hand, ready to do business. Email me when you got money in hand, ready to do business. Because what happens is that black men are really guilty of this too. You think that planning something is doing something. And you'll put that on your resume. And cats will just go on and on and on about what they're going to do. And they'll put that on their resume. Uh, my name is Darnell. I had planned to bring um, somebody down to this school um, in 2005. Then in 2007, I had planned another um, event. And then I had planned another event. They'll tell you about what they're planning, but not what they've done. 
And cats think by sitting up planning something, that's an accomplishment. I'm going to get on brothers. I'm, I'm getting on brothers because we got to get out that bullshit. Niggas be putting that shit on their resume. They plan to do something. So that that's not doing business, planning on doing something, brothers. Yeah, what I had tried to do. See, I've done, let me give you a little bit about myself. See, I had tried to organize a million um macaroni march. Yeah, there's all the macaronis out there, all the Macs and players. We we're going to have a million macaroni march. I planned that. It never went through, but I planned it. And also, we were going to plan. I planned a food drive. We never fed nobody, but I planned it. And um, 2013, we had planned a, a dog walk in the park for blind babies. Um, and that didn't get it didn't get through. But we planned that, brother. I mean, dude, cats be bragging about shit they planning. So get off that bullshit about you planning something. Cats think that they're accomplishing something by planning. You think by going out here putting forth an effort, you're doing something without actually doing something. Putting the effort there and not executing and getting anything accomplished, that's not the business. You dig? We got to get off that old half-ass bullshit mentality being satisfied with trying. Niggas be wanting that C for effort shit. You know, Cass hit me up. Hey, man, I, I really tried to bring you out here, man. I tried to get a grant from the school. I had tried, man. I'm really, I tried, man. I really tried, man. I don't give a fuck about you trying. What have you done? Don't hit me up talking about what you're trying to do. Get something. Let's do business, dude. Do business. Get stuff done. Also, man, look, look I'm, I'm, if you're a real estate person, hit me up, by the way, because I'm trying to buy some investment properties down in Atlanta. That's it's another thing. I'm trying to buy some investment properties down in Atlanta. You know, and, and I'm, I'm real to the point, man. I saw this property. How much? Who owns it? How much? Is the property good? Does it look good? Any renovations? What do we need? Bam. What's up, sweet thing? What's happening, baby? Yes, I am going to be done at 9 to watch Walking Dead. Okay. Because I got to record the other shows. What other shows? Homeland and the then Money Day Fiance. Oh, I got to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, uh, did, have y'all seen the show? This is my beautiful wife. She knows her. Come here, baby. Come here, sweet thing. <laughs> Say what's up, baby. Why, are those my drawers you got on? Yeah. I feel like wearing my shit and you pregnant stretching it out. What's up, baby? <laughs> What's up, how's TJ? He's sleeping. Yeah. You you let the dogs up? No. No, none of my base Coco was kind of scared to go. They were scared to go out the gate when I had to. <laughs> they were scared. It's called Papito. Tell them about the 90 Day Fiance. Yeah, I'm gonna tell them about that. Man, there's a show. Y'all say, did y'all say I'm cupcaking? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Fuck you. I'm cupcaking. There's a show called 90 Day Fiance. It's funny as hell. What channel does it come on? Um, I don't know. It I comes know. on one of those channels. But I don't know. Right? It's 90 Day Fiance. Basically, it's like these people here, they got these mail-order brides and mail-order husbands in different countries. So it's like one dude, he's a white dude from Seattle, he got like this kind of mail-order bride from the Philippines and he brought her over. She's real bitchy, you, you, you know. And then there's another female, white girl, who's down in, um, where is she? It's, it's Central, was it Nicaragua somewhere? She was somewhere down in a Spanish country. Columbia. She, Columbia. And he brought her. she got like this dude, this Colombian dude. He's like a pop star oh, down no, there. Oh, no, they're in Nicaragua. Nicaragua, yeah. that's what I thought, Nicaragua. So she's dating him. He's in like a like a pop band and he's gonna she's gonna bring him here and you know his the people in the pop group don't want him to go and all that old shit. And then there's this one white lady and you know she you know, she's kind of a beast. <laughs> and she's she, she got like a few are her daughters grown or they're teenagers? No they're teenagers. They're teenagers. And, she's the one grown and this lady kind of looks like Peter Griffin. I mean she's she you is. know she she's kind of strong in the face. You saw it, Big Will? And she got this dude from, like, Morocco. Ain't he from Morocco? Tunisia. 
Tunisia. He's like from North Africa. It looked like, you know. He looks uh, Middle Eastern. He looks Middle Eastern. He looks Middle Eastern. And he's young. He's a younger dude. Because yeah, she's like 41, but she like looks 55, you know, is one of them type. And he's like 29 or something like he's that. 26. 26, okay. And, you know, he she, she sends him money to come over. So, Ronnie says she's visually abusive. <laughs> And she she sends him money to come over, and he kind of gets lost, and she starts crying because she thinks that he took took her money and bounced, which I thought he was gonna do, which I think he probably tried to do, but some other <laughs> shit didn't go through, so he just said, "Fuck it, let me just ride it out with this chick." So he finally hooked up with her, and you know they they he, she's moving him in and everything, and she's all clingy. And the look on his eyes is like, oh, it's just a look of just emptiness. He can't even pretend. He can't even pretend to be disgusted. He's trying. And then, like, doing interviews, he's like, yes, her looks are um, acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> and it's looking, I'm feeling bad because I know, I'm like, oh, she wants, I know she's going to want him to hit it. And my, he did a player move on her ass. He was like, we cannot have sex because of my religion. We got to get mad at first. <laughs> I said, she's trying to hurry up and get married. I said, get it in, nigga. You better stall. You better stall, nigga. <laughs> my nigga blamed it on his religion. I ain't mad at him. I do it too. I'm like, my fucker, I'm a monk. I'm like, I'm, I'm Buddhist. Yum, hunger, and can't kill. I start doing all types of prayers to get out. You hitting that pussy. My dude came up with the religious pitch. He's trying to get that green card. I'm not mad at dude, man. <laughs> Said he was a gigolo with a weak stomach. Oh, man. What about the Filipino girl? She doesn't even act like she likes him. Yeah, I know. She's, 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 talking, she's crazy. talking crazy to him. Yeah, but man, sooner or later, dude is going to have to hit it, though. And I feel so bad for dude. You say Peanut looks like a young Vanessa Williams. Hey, yeah. Nigga. If I was dude, I'd come up with a new religion every week. <laughs> I was like, can we do it now? Um, Hotep, sister. Hotep, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. She says she wants to be intimate with him. Too. Yeah, she she wants I mean, she, This chick is, ugh, you know, she's a beast. <laughs> and she's like a clingy ass chick, too. Do you remember if he saw he's crying and holding him? He's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he would let him go. Oh, God. It was so, so, ugh. But my man, you gotta, he's like, she better pay like she weigh, man. <laughs> he's trying to get that come up. He's trying to get that green card hook up. Man. Man, man, how many people in the room? What's TJ doing? Shit. Oh, it's cold outside. I know it's freezing out here. Anybody out here on the West Coast? It is freezing out here. Man, but that's the thing, man. A lot of those women, man, those older white women, you know, we all know they go to places like Jamaica. Because when we were in Jamaica, we saw that. It was some, so some of the white women, the older ones, they didn't look too, too bad. Because I saw a couple of older white women who looked kind of nice walking up and down the beach with brothers. But then you got them SpongeBob looking women who was going over there. And, you know, and it's very exploitive. And now they're going over to Africa. I saw an article where a lot of these older white women are going over to like, you know, Kenya and places like that, getting dudes. What's up, these 357 theories? Say, how do you handle your, your daughter's mother drama? What's going on with that? Oh, yeah, the crispy shirts. Oh, yeah, and don't forget to get the crispy shirts, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you get the crispy shirts at um, cafepress.com slash crispy puppet. That's cafepress.com slash crispy puppet. And I want you to take pictures with your crispy shirt. And I'm going to put them up on Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. The peanut looks like Elvarn, I know. Yeah. Yes, she does. Yes, indeed, she does. But well, we are hella deep in here tonight. We are hella deep in here tonight. Mm -hmm. Man. 
You recording the shows right now? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay. It's good. I know it's freezing. It's freezing in here, man. Yeah, the weather is a beast right now. So, Coco didn't want to go back outside? Well, no, she didn't want to come out the gate. You know, when I, well, I let him back in. And then when I was about to leave to take Taria to her mom, mm -hmm. I lift up the gate. And they, her and Diego were kind of scared to go out, leave really? the gate. They were scared. Yeah, they know. the coyote growling? I don't know. But when I went out, the coyote ran up back up into the hills. Oh, okay. Yeah. But Blanco wasn't scared, huh? Bon no, he don't know. He never had his ass chomped at. So he don't know no better. <laughs> Yeah, man, we had another coyote scare in my yard earlier today. Y'all know that, you know, I had a couple of dogs killed by coyotes. And earlier today, you know, I let the dogs out in the back. And, you know, we live, like, right by the hills. And my daughter's like, Dad, there's a coyote outside. So I ran out and yelled. I actually tore the screen. I, tore, I knocked the screen. I didn't know I did. So I ran out. I knocked the screen out. This big-ass coyote running up the hill. I'm like, God damn, man. Fuck. <sighs> Man, so I gotta, we gotta get some barbed wire or something to, to, you know, we we gotta get something to deter them. Someone said, "Is Diego still on the plane?" Yes. <laughs> more the yes. Yeah, he, the last thing he needs to be attacked, he be getting punked out by other chihuahuas and shit. He's like real scary. Man. <laughs> Poor dog. Yeah. Yeah, that's Diego, the crackhead dog. We got him from the shelter. I don't know what they did to him. I told you, when we first brought him home, that nigga would be doing all types of weird shit. He'd be like standing. We'd be sleep. I'd be sleeping. I look up. This motherfucker standing by the bed. <laughs> looking like, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Well, you know, come get this dog. He was a stray dog. Yeah, he was a stray. So I, they must have hooked his ass, whoever had him. Yeah, Diego was on one, man. And, and one time... Every time police sirens go by, this nigga hide. I'm like, what kind of, you know? Like, like, woo, he's like, he looking around, hiding him. He don't like to touch his ear or his tail. Yeah. I'm like, what kind of, you like a lookout meth dog or something. Say so he was on that lean. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I, I want to get a, like, we had a whole bunch of big dogs when we lived in the other spot. Because we had a real big backyard and we weren't in the hills and the whole backyard was encased by gates. But, you know, we, so yeah, it was just a lot of shit. But here, now we got too many small dogs and, you know, I don't want no pit bulls to eat the small dogs while protecting from the coyotes. And also with them coyotes, they will gang up on dogs, too. I've seen that. Coyotes, if they see a big dog, they'll, like, come in packs and, and kind of... And kind of gang up on it because our neighbor, we used to, well, he moved. He had a real big dog, and the coyotes used to come every night and try to gang up on it. But he had the like barbed wire fences and all that stuff. Didn't the guy say there was the other one? There was he has Chow Chow, and there was coyotes in there. His yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the dog that died. Yeah, yeah, Miko. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> yeah, but shit. I need to get some 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 dogs that's about that life. Ving Rhames, the actor Ving Rhames, he had some dogs. What kind of dogs did Ving Rhames? Because his dogs killed the dude. Really? It was like, yeah, Ving Rhames. It was somebody went in Ving Rhames' backyard, and he had some dogs that fucked them up. His dogs killed somebody. I think it was like one of his workers or something like that. I don't know. Did you go to jail? No, no, I don't think Ving Rhames was was at home or whatever. But the the dude somehow got in Ving Rhames' backyard. And Ving Rhames wasn't at home, so, you know. He was trespassing. I don't know if the guy was trespassing. Was it Mastiffs? What kind of dogs did Ving Rhames... If y'all can look that up. But them dogs <laughs> must have been about that life. But again, like I was saying earlier about real estate, because again, I'm trying to buy some investment properties down in Atlanta. And when it comes to doing business, we've got to do business. We've got to stop talking so much because that's another thing. Cats try to overplan shit without executing things. And then what happens is that a lot of people, black folks, you'll talk yourself out of a deal. You 
trying to talk and be persuade being persuasive, that's one thing. That's one thing. But just kind of rambling on, you're talking yourself out the deal. And that's the problem. Because I've talked to some people before. I was talking to one dude, real estate cat down in Atlanta. I, I was interested in a property. And, you know, I'm real cut and dry. Hey, man, this is I'm, I'm looking for this. If that place that I'm inquiring about is not available, this is what I want. I want a, a house in this area, a house that's 10 years or built less than 10 years ago. Um these many bedrooms, I want this, that, that. I'm very specific about what I'm looking for. And then this brother goes on and just kind of starts rambling. I'm just like, call me when you get some some leads on some houses like that. You know, I'm going I'm to I'm 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 get some. Okay, I can do that, brother. And also, well, we got some other houses over here in this area, brother. And you might be interested in getting a house that was built in the 1950s because the house was in the 1950s. They're more sturdy. And you get the house with the basements and they're better. I said, no, 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 I'm fine. Just, you know, I want newer houses. This area. Also, brother, what you might want to do is it that, uh, okay. Okay, I, I can take some good advice about the area or whatever, but the dude went beyond that and just started rambling and rambling and rambling. Because, yeah, I do this, man. I've been doing this for a long time, brother. You know, I'd be glad to help because I've been doing this and when I was in Louisiana. I was doing it too. And I'm like, okay, brother. Okay. And I'm thinking, now nah, I ain't fucking with this dude, man. I'm not fucking with this dude. Now he sounds like he's hustling. Now he sounds like he's hustling. See, I see, cats will talk themselves out of something so easily. I'm like, man. Dude. I'm real cut and dry. I don't... I'm real cut and dry, brother. Yeah, then when cats start sounding desperate, when they start talking like that, trying to... You, oh, you can't oversell yourself, man. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes you got to let your work speak for itself, man. Let your work speak for itself. And, and when, when you're tr trying to over talk and just, and I'm trying to get off the phone and you clearly see I'm trying to get off the phone because I'm not a phone person. I'm not, I don't like sitting on the phone at all. I, I don't like talking on the phone at all. That's I'm not a phone person at all. If I'm on the phone, it's, I'm still on there for three minutes or less because I'm trying to get to the point. I get to the point. Hey, I want this, 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 and this, all right? And call me when you have it. Click. That's really my phone conversations. I want this, 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 and this. When you have it, call me. Bam. And that's it. I I'm not a phone person. So when people try to keep me on the phone, bad luck. Most real, real business people, they ain't really yapping on the phone all the time. Business people ain't really yapping and clapping on the phone all the time. I'm going to talk about that when I go on the road. When I go on the road, I'm going to talk about that. Also, we got the Melanoid Nation Foundation popping. The website for the Melanoid Nation Foundation, MNF, that's going to be coming up in a few weeks. We're going to get that popping. We're going to get a lot of things going on. We're going to get some food drives for Thanksgiving we're going to get a toy drive for Christmas. Um, we're going to get some scholarships going on. So we're going to start doing some real good things with the Melanoid Nation um, organization. And also, we're going to have the T-shirt. So we're going to get it popping. We're going to really get this thing popping. And again, the website will be up in a couple of weeks. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. And, that, and that's another thing. See, when I say something is going to pop off, it's already in the works. You dig? When I say something's going to pop off, it's going to pop off. I, I just usually show. You dig? Yeah, that's what you know, the, the ladies like talking on the phone and all that. That's that's feminine to me. Just sitting around yapping and yapping and yapping and yapping. You dig? Yeah, Melanoid. Melanoid Nation Foundation. That is the name of my nonprofit organization, and we're going to do a lot of things globally for the community yes we will have donation information we're going to have um food drive this thanksgiving and also man we're gonna we, this is for members only too this ain't no everybody jump on in no because we, we we're screening for trolls we only want people involved 
who are serious. This is serious business. This is serious business, man. We're getting, we getting shit done out here. We're getting some things done. What's up, you want to see T TJ sleep? He's sleep right now. Yes, Miss Braxton, absolutely. We'll definitely let you know when to donate and all that old stuff. Definitely. All that good stuff. Because we're going to get a lot of things going on. We're going we're gonna to have all of that information on the website in a couple of weeks. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll keep you guys posted. But yeah, we're going to get this thing popping. Because again, I see people out here who's supposed to be doing things and you know, I, I hate to see people get donations for stuff and then don't do it. And I saw a lot of that stuff go down in Ferguson. Very disheartening stuff. I saw a lot of people just straight up mismanage a lot of the funds that were allocated for people down there in Ferguson. And that's the, that stuff we're going to have to just stop. That's going to stop. Because the problem is you got a lot of people all of a sudden... A lot of people would try to take advantage of tragedies, and people, you know, with that, you know, that that slave mentality, man, they ain't never had nothing. And the minute they get a little status or a little money, that nigger spirit come out, and they start getting niggerish. So, and the people been asking me for the longest, hey, hey man, can we just get the money to you and have you do it? And, you know, I've been waiting to get this nonprofit popping so I can do that. Because I like to show and prove. When I get involved with some stuff, I, I get it. I'm not, I'm not going to plan for 20 years and all that talking about what the fuck I'm going to do. We're going to get it done. I get stuff done very quickly. You, you dig? And people know that. And people around me, my man Ola, I got a, a great team. Ola is a part of the nonprofit too. Uh, I'm just getting thorough people. I want to get Aki involved too. Aki, Aki is a very thorough young lady. I just want thorough brothers and sisters involved so we can get stuff done. Get stuff done like we're supposed to get it done. Yeah, yeah, Michael, that snatch for justice and all that old silly nonsense, man. Enough of that, dude. Let's talk more action, man. Straight up and down. Yeah, man, I can't wait till my man Jason Black's movie come out, man. I can't wait on that. Yeah, I heard about that, Vital. And from what I understand, I heard that it was not the mom, but somebody else with the mom fighting. So I'm not going to really throw the mom under the bus. And shout out to Mike Brown's mom. I know she's going to the UN in a couple of weeks. And... I'm looking into going out there too, because they're going to um, there's going to be a meeting in Geneva, and I'm looking into going out there too. I'm looking into going out there too. I'm going to do some some checking on that tomorrow to see if I still have time to do that. And also, I got a a lecture here in L.A. on the 15th, and the thing in Geneva is going to it's going to be November 12th and 13th. So I'm gonna see if I can squeeze that in. I'm going to see if I can squeeze that in. I would like to go out there to Geneva and talk about, you know, human rights over here and, and torture and all that stuff. I would love to go over there and really um, get down with that. What's on, on, on who? What's my views on E.T. Williams and his comments? Who, who are you talking? That's another thing. Who y'all be talking about? But okay, y'all be asking about some random shit, man. Who in the hell are you talking about? Man, niggas be bringing up the most random shit I ain't never heard about. I'm going to keep you posted on that. Um, the guys, the organizers are going to let me know the exact venue. They'll let me know sometime this week. What's up with the online forum? Which one are you talking about? No, Jay. I think every everybody can come to it. 
Everybody can come to it. Now, if, there's going to be some gangsters there, but everybody can come to it because the dude who's um, sponsoring it, the guy who's putting it together is an OG Crip. So he's the guy who's putting it together. He's a community activist too, but he's like a real, 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 real OG. Real respected dude in L.A. And he's putting it together. But you can go, ain't, no, ain't nothing going to happen, shit. <laughs> ain't nothing going to happen to you. It's, it's, it's going to be real cool in the gang. You dig? But again, my if, you, if you're a brother, sister in Atlanta, you do real estate, email me, man. Email me if you're in Atlanta and you do real estate. Also, if you're in Houston and you do real estate, because I'm trying to get some investment properties out there in Atlanta and in Houston. So if you're into real estate and you, you're serious if you're serious about what you do, hit me up and let's do business. I would love to, to see some brothers and sisters get that commission. You dig? I would love to see brothers and sisters get that commission because I'm dead serious about what I do. And I would love brothers and sisters want to get the commission, but just be up on your game. Know what you're doing and get to the damn point. Yeah, but as we know, that whole street harassment thing, that whole street harassment thing, which I've been talking about for at least a year. Now, y'all, even here on this, right here on this microphone, right here, y'all know I've been talking about how this street harassment propaganda is a front for something else. I've been telling people, I mean, I've been saying it over and over till I'm blue in the face. This ain't got nothing to do with street harassment, man. This is some white supremacist nonsense. These people are using that to create a new stop and frisk program. Dude, we exposed the hell out of that holla back nonsense First, again, I've been talking about them for the longest, telling people exactly what they're doing. Now it comes, it comes out they are doing exactly what I said they were doing. This whole thing had racial undertones to it. They were targeting black men all along, like I've always been saying. Now all of those fake wannabe, pretend-to-be feminist websites who were slandering me for pointing out the racism in that street harassment campaign, they're backpedaling. Now they're talking about the racism. No, you don't. Clutch Magazine. Clutch Magazine. All of you Twitter twiminists who troll on Twitter, pretending to be feminist, now you want to speak on the, the, the racism now that white people are now calling the racism out. The racism with the street harassment thing has become so blatant, even white people are like, hey, y'all kind of went overboard with that. Mm, we're going to have to back away from you with that one. Oh, we got... Now, when the white people start backing away saying the same thing I'm saying, now all of these bedwinches are jumping on the bandwagon trying to call out the racism. No, you knew about it all along. The Twiminist, they knew about it all along. So now they want to try to call out the racism now after they criticize me for calling it out. Clutch was talking real greasy about me a year ago when I called out the racism in the street harassment. They were saying Tariq is trying to silence our voices by saying that street harassment is going to replace stop and frisk. Him and those Mackin books. He's trying, he's a misogynist, trying to, mis he's trying to silence our voices. Street harassment is real. Now they're backpedaling. That's why I don't back down from the, that nonsense. And I don't respect any dude or any woman who, who backpedals and back down from internet trolls. Because the thing is, I stand on truth, man. I, that's why I never back down from any of them. 
I don't back down from them. I'm not Captain Save them. You, you dig? So I, and if you stand on truth, the truth is going to always come out. And again, people are seeing it for what it is. That whole street harassment campaign, they put up that video of the white lady walking around New York seemingly for 10 hours and they narrowed the footage down to a bunch of black dudes hollering at her, calling it harassment. And that's part of the plan. That's like I said, that has always been part of the plan because they're trying to gentrify the hell out of New York. They're trying to get black folks up out of New York. I was just in New York, man. You go to Harlem, they got police officers on every corner, not to protect the black people, but to protect the white people and to make the white people feel safe who's moving into Harlem. 125th is loaded with cops. So number one, this woman walking around Harlem, nothing was going to happen to her. Not one thing was going to happen to that woman walking around Harlem. There's a cop on every goddamn corner in Harlem. There's two cops on every corner. Nothing was going to happen to that woman in Harlem. Besides people saying hello, most of the stuff people were saying, hey, good, God bless you, hello, hi, beautiful. So it wasn't really, they weren't harassing the woman. But again, they have to have a precedent to justify creating a police presence against black people. Not just black men, but black people. Because all black people are going to get it. It's not, see, the, the Negro, uh, the handful, and thank goodness most black women don't think like this, but the handful of Negro bedwinches who are trying to sell black people out to get crumbs on the white supremacist table, they think if they throw black men under the bus and creep over here with the white supremacists, they're going to get a pass. Not going to happen. Oh, yeah, the dude who directed that bullshit video, he's known for that gentrification and, and doing little slick stuff as far as videos. He's a little slick ass dude. You dig? So again, sisters get it too. I did an interview today with a reporter, a sister from Brooklyn. What's the mag? What the hell is the magazine? They're doing a story on me. I think it's, what was the name of the magazine? Don Dad, I can't think of the name. I can't think of it. I did a, an interview with a reporter. She was from some magazine. I can't think of the name of it. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of the name of it right now because I do a lot of interviews for people and I forget who they are until the article comes out. So it was a lady who interviewed me for the UK. It was a magazine in the UK that came out last week. She did a very good article. But I did this interview with this sister. We're just chopping up some real good game about. Um, gentrification and race and Ferguson and all that and she's from Brooklyn and she was telling me how you know she was at the park just chilling she was just at the park sitting on a park bench and she had like a cup and the cops rolled up on her like what you drinking like kind of gaffling her up a little bit and she said that's kind of prevalent they're just out there in Brooklyn the police are just rolling up on brothers and sisters out there just like on the on a humbug, just on anything. They're just running up on you, questioning you about any and everything. So the women are not getting a pass. The women are not getting a pass at all. But it's it's very funny how the white supremacists will project a lot of things on black folks. You know what's funny? They got this this white lady walking around Harlem. When dudes saying, God bless, how are you? Have, look, you haven't seen, if we're going to say that's harassment, you haven't seen a black woman, a very attractive black woman, walk around a group of white dudes. Because they say a whole bunch of crazy shit to black women. You want to see harassment. They say all types of shit to black women. Hey. You look like Gabrielle Union. You're pretty hot for a black girl. Tape some of that. That's what that's what we should tape. We should get some secret tapes of that. I, I, look, I, I, I've dated girls and I had them on the phone. I'm talking to them and they're walking like somewhere in Beverly Hills or whatever. And I've heard these white guys saying all types of shit. 
Oh, fuck, you're fucking hot. Man, you're fucking, you're fucking hot. So those feminists don't want to show that. You don't want to, they don't want to show that. That's what we need to film. Some sisters getting around some of them white dudes. Especially them drunk ones. At a club somewhere. Woo! Fucking hot chocolate. <laughs> they be saying all types of shit. What's up, man? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What you looking for? Upstairs. They're not, not upstairs? Okay, they're not in here. Um. should be some upstairs. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah, the white dudes be saying all types of shit. To sisters. Your ass is so hot. You have a hot ass. Man, they be saying all types of stuff. Can I touch your fucking hair? <laughs> Man, please. They say all types of shit to sisters. Especially a real fine sister. Man. I'm telling you, dude, I, I've dated sisters who, like, worked in the corporate world and all that, and they talk to me on their lunch break, and they go somewhere. Man, they say all types of stuff. They're holy shit balls. <laughs> it's, it's always, you look like Gabrielle Union. You look, you remind me of Holly Berry. You don't look shit like Holly Berry. It's, it, it, the, the, the nearest black woman they think is attractive, you look like a... Oh, white dude, you look like Lola Falana. Like, motherfucker, ain't nobody heard of Lola Falana for 30 years. The chick can look, the chick can be jet black. Huh? You look like Alicia Keys. You ain't seen harassment till you've seen some sisters get around some white dudes. Vistibiano. You see how Donald Sterling was talking to her? They talked to the sisters like that in, 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 in public. That's what you need to film. No holler back. They ain't going to cover that, though. They won't cover that. You had a few Marines. Dude, let me tell you something. When we were down in the Dominican Republic, y'all saw I had a picture of my son TJ that was like this this guy and this Dominican dude, this Dominican sister at the hotel we were staying in. And the sister had on like that carnival type of outfit, you know, that traditional Dominican outfit that they have at the parades and all that. And they were just taking pictures for tourists. And, you know, little white kids kept running up grabbing the sister's ass. And she kept, no, 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 no. And none of the black kids did that. You know, it was real respectful. TJ did try to grab a titty now. But he's like, you know, he's like, it's dinner time. Shit. He don't know no better. But a lot of, <laughs> a lot of little white kids kept trying to grab this sister's ass. She was a fine sister, too. And it's, it's very interesting how they instantly sexualized and objectified her. You understand what I'm saying? It's very interesting how at a young age... They're taught to sexually objectify African women. You dig? Yeah, that Sarah Bartman thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but TJ sees some titties, you know. He's he like, well, shit. I just ate, but I can eat again. You know, he, you know, he, it's dinner time. <laughs> you 
Yeah, yeah, black people always over-sexualized. But I noticed that. This, this woman kept reprimanding these little kids. These little white kids kept grabbing her ass. It's an anthology. It's a file a class action suit. And the thing is, against who? And who's going to prosecute it? Because these guys, you know, the, the, the entertainment industry, you know, they got lawyers on lock. Oh, man, uh, that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to get a camera, get a fine black woman, and let her walk through a group of white dudes. And then you'll see real street harassment. That's something they will never talk about. They try to make street harassment a black male thing. Sisters get around white dudes, especially drunk ones, and they say some vile shit to sisters. They immediately try to object objectify them sexually. It's a high peanut. No, because they do that. Then, then I'll get upset and then have to run up on one of them dudes. So. <laughs> That's what we need to do. And it ain't going to be, God bless you, have a nice day. All the drunk ones, the, the shit, the drunk ones walk up to brothers. The last time I was down in Atlanta, we went to one bar up in one white neighborhood, they took me to some place. Bunch of drunk white people up in there, running up. Woo! High five, bro! Woo! Look at all the pussy in here, bro! I'm like, okay, all right. All right. Okay. Shit, you ain't seen harassment. Them drunk white dudes, they run up and just start grinding on sisters. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> They run up and just start grinding. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> well, you're hot. Turn down for what? <laughs> Go to Vegas. <laughs> Dude, fuck out of here talking about some brother saying, God bless you and how are you? That's harassment. No, no don't try to make that a black male thing. Go to Vegas. Just go to Vegas and watch how they act when a real fine sister walk around them. It's it is really worth and forget street harassment. Just on the job of harassment, sisters get when they are attractive. An attractive sister at a job. They get the, the, well, just black people in general. Black people in general, especially a decent-looking black male. If a black male, if you're a decent-looking brother, you're in shape, and you go into corporate America, nigga, if you ain't moist, they look for ways to get your ass up out of there because, number one, all the non-black women, they're going to be trying to campaign low-key, who are hot, the hot women, of other races, they're going to be low-key trying to campaign, low-key trying to campaign, because they don't want to offend the bosses, because they know that the bosses don't like that. The unattractive women of other races, they're going to be hating. You dig? And the, the men, they're going to really be busting your balls. But, but with an attractive black woman in the workplace, if you ain't no Jigga boom bed wench. If you ain't in there cooning, you are a threat. Dude, I know, and I talked about this before. I know some sisters, man, they try to work in corporate America, work in, you know, jobs with other races of people, and it's a, just a nightmare, man. Because the, the, the bosses are going to all be trying to campaign to give you promotions. They're going to be trying to campaign and try to get you to do shit to get a promotion. And the other women there are going to be 
low-key sabotaging you, trying to tr to hate on you. And I've seen it happen, man. I have seen it happen. I'm years ago, nigga. I, I talked about this before, dude. I had a telemarketing job years ago. There was a white girl, a white lady. She was like the um, the manager there. She wasn't the owner. She was just the manager. It was a white chick. And she was the kind of white chick who dated black dudes. And telemarketing, you know, you let, you know, you don't, you don't need to have too much experience to do telemarketing. You don't need too much experience to do that. So, you know, you got people coming in and out. And this white chick, she was the manager. You know, just a homely looking chick. But I think she had like mixed kids. You know, she dated a few black dudes or whatever. So, you know, it was a couple other brothers there working. So, you know, she thought she was the shit. You know, she was... And like it was older black, a couple of older black ladies there, a couple of brothers, a couple of white folks there. So you know it was a pretty mixed place. And oh, I'm like a teenager at the time. You know I'm just I would work a couple of square jobs, get back out there grinding. And there was this real cute sister they hired. The the people on top hired this real cute sister, who's like 19 or 20, cute as hell, little slim, cute thing, dude. The white females in that office were plotting. They were nitpicking this sister. And they were just looking for a reason to fire this girl. They were literally looking for a reason to fire her. Oh, she's not reading the thing right. And because the white the, the 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 female manager was telling me, hey Tariq, you know, what's her, I, I forgot what the girl's name was, but yeah. You notice she's not really reading the script right. You know, she's not saying the words correctly. We might have to let her go, but we, we just want to feel her out. I'm like, oh, can you keep an ear out? I'm like, I'm not about to snitch for you. Fuck out of here. Oh. I'm like, man, the fuck out of here. So I'm chilling, you know, doing my thing, and I'm I'm just, they're, they're monitoring this girl to try to look for something to fire the chick for, just because she was cute. That's the only reason they were trying to fire that chick. You're yeah, trying to get me to co-sign that shit. I'm like, I'm not, what the fuck? They ended up, and they ended up firing. They're like, um, I, I forgot what the girl's name, Lisa. Lisa, can we talk to you in the office for a second? And then she went in there, and I'm like, man, I knew they were firing her. And she's like, hey, Tariq, they let me go. I don't know why. But, you know, I, you know, I give you my number. We holler, whatever. And after they fired, I quit after they fired her. I'm like, fuck them. I ain't, this ain't for me. Because they do that to her, they'll do it to me sooner or later. So fuck them. So I, after they fired her, I quit too. So I, that I didn't like. That wasn't cool at all. So I, I know how those those office politics go. And they were hating on that chick just because she was cute. She wasn't doing shit wrong. This was a bullshit jive-ass telemarketing job. Nigga, crackheads would come in there and get jobs. You know, you go in there and whatever. You no, know, crackheads would literally because that telemarketing places were places where you go in between hustles. When you get out of jail, you know, this motherfucker get out of jail, you go there, make a couple of quick dollars, get back in the streets. It was that type of shit. That's what telemarketing jobs were for back in the day. You know, but for them to pull that move, that was real raggedy. I said, I said, okay, I see how these office politics get down. This haircut. Why can't we get Tariq on the breakfast club, brilliant earlier? Let's see who we got on the phone. Haven't taken a call yet. What's up? Who's calling? Hello. Hey, what's up, man? Who's this? Uh, this is Jay from Detroit. I want to keep it real quick because I know you the man. Yes, sir. You got a lot of things going on. What's on your mind? Um, the, my question is, what do you think about black people tracing their own family history? Because I traced mine and I found out that Anderson Cooper on my people. Oh, really? How'd you find that out? Ancestry.com, man. Um, my last name is Boykin, and um, I trace my roots on Ancestry.com back to um, uh, uh, an episode on, uh, what's that, what's that uh, 
that show that come on PBS. That uh, with with Skip Gates. Yeah, that one. That one. Yes, okay. Bureau Boykin. That that dude owned my people. And then I trace that back to Ancestry.com based on census records and um and um uh, uh voter records. Okay. And addresses. What do you think about us tracing our own history? That's a, that's it. That's something that, you know, because I've traced mine to a certain degree as far back as I can do it, but that's a good thing to do to, to trace your history. And you say um Anderson Cooper, because I know his family, they're the Vanderbilt family and his mother is Gloria Vanderbilt. She had these genes back in the 80s, and he comes from a very wealthy, 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 wealthy family. So I would look into that. I know um, a lot of black folks are looking into tracing their ancestry. Again, I trace my lineage back to Mozambique. So that is something that we need to do. Also, what we need to do, and this is very important, we need to trace our lineage back to those Indian roles. And let me, I'm going to talk to the room about that too, but that's another thing too, because when we trace it back, now we need to find out where's the money. You dig and start saying, okay, look, this person, this person, this person owes us some damn money because there's a lot of money out there that we need to be hollering about. So that's why they don't like us tracing our lineage back because then we start putting a face on some of this money that's being made that our family generated for right. certain um, wealthy families like the Vanderbilts and all of that, and then we can say, "Hey, man, let me um, let me holler at you about something. You you, did, you need to break right. me off a little bit, something." But let me talk about that in the room right now. Thanks for the call. All right, thank you, man. And my man brought up a good point. Also, man, you know, every blue moon, you guys hear about some Indian tribe that has ousted all of the black members. You always hear stories like that. You always hear about the Cherokee tribe ousted all of the black members recently, or this tribe ousted the black members. There's a reason why they do that. They do that because what happened, we talked about this in Hidden Colors 2, if you haven't seen it. With Hidden Colors 2, we talked about how a lot of white supremacists, when in the late 1800s, when the government were, was giving out land allotments to Indian tribes, the white supremacists would, they created something called the Dolls Rolls. So, White people who wanted land would give the people taking the census $5 under the table. Say, hey, here's $5. List me as a Native American. And they would do that. So you get a white person who ain't got no Native American ancestry would get land because he tricked or secretly put money under the table to get on the Indian roll. And most of the people you see today are white people claiming to be Native American. They ain't Native American at all. They ain't got one drop of Native American blood in them. Not one drop. They're $5 Indians. That's where the term came from, $5 Indians. And what they would do with the Dolls Rolls, you had black people who were intermixed with the Native Americans. They would put them on the Freedmen's Roll. Also, they would set up tents and call it the nigger tent or the darky tent and have the black people sign up there. And they wouldn't get anything. But a few black people got to be listed in the Cherokee tribes and all of these other tribes, and they would get certain benefits. And the name of the, the game is to keep resources away from black folks. There's a treaty called the Treaty of 1866, which says that black people are supposed to get some of those land allotments and some of those set-asides from being bound to these Native American tribes. So they always try to keep you disassociated from those tribes, which a lot of us are associated with those tribes, and we should be getting money. They, they want to keep you away from those, those casinos, that land, all of those resources black folks are supposed to be getting. We need to start looking deep into the, the Indian treaties of 1866. Claude Anderson talks about this a lot, but we need to look into those treaties because there's a lot of money that we should be getting. Because what happened was the so-called five civilized tribes, they were some of them were slave owners and they had black people in slavery and they didn't want to let them go. And they sided with the South during the Civil War. So they didn't want to let the, the Africans go. And because they went to war, some of these civilized tribes went to war with the United States. 
the earlier treaties were null and void because we can't we ain't got no more treaties. If you've gone to war with us, we ain't got no more treaties. So after the Civil War, they signed another treaty, the Treaty of 1866, saying that the Native Americans, you're supposed to give black people who are associated with your tribes and their descendants some of the same benefits that we're giving you. And around 1941, they started to show how to get black people out of that. They started coming up with little slick ways to get black people and oust them from that. But we got to look into those treaties because people still use those Indian treaties today. And if those treaties are saying that black folks should get something, we should get something. You can't get a treaty and then give it to one group and then ignore the other group. The problem is we don't know about these treaties. I want you guys to look into those treaties of 1866 tonight if you can. And the thing is, no, there's some black people who are mixed in with the Native Americans. There are a lot of black people who are like, yeah, my grandmother's Cherokee, my grandmother's Choctaw, and which is true. That is true. And they should be getting something. That is absolutely true. There are black people who are associated with these tribes. And they should be getting something. Let's see who's on the phone. What's up? What's up? Who's calling? There are black people. Hello? Hey, what's up? Who's this? Uh, this is Nikki G. I'm a poet out of Phoenix. Hey, Nikki G., the poet out of Phoenix. How are you, young lady? Um, absolutely awesome. Uh, my fiancé, Sean, he uh, introduced me to your show. What's up, he Sean? Is he there? Oh, so, three. How you doing, brother? What's going on with you, Sean? What y'all doing in Arizona? Making it happen? Yes, indeed. Time to say it live. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So what's on your mind, Nikki G.? So the situation was when I got introduced to your show, one of the first shows that I watched you cover the situation with the uh, the girl who was dating the owner of the Clippers. And uh, yes. I heard from the video and the thing that out outraged me the most was when she apologized for being black. Yeah. And so between yeah. that and some of the topics I've heard you discuss, it, um, it inspired me to write a poem. And so I was calling in to try to share it with you. Okay. Let let's get that poem popping. Let's get it popping. Okay. I make no apologies for my blackness. I do not need political correctness. African American, Negro, Black, Jamaican, I am. But many of you do not understand. I can tell how you view me by how you describe my skin tone. You do not view it for its distinct shade, but rather wipe it out like a sling blade to my existence. You describe me as chalk. When I walk the earth in smooth caramel curving and ribbons of soft brown, but it's lost on me like sound to deaf ears. If you hear only of the chatter of media airwaves, YouTube put for the social media Bible mainstays that tell you I am a lazy, uneducated, promiscuous, welfare swimming, illegitimate, victim making machine, parading the obscene across your screen. I have followed the status quo in education and career. And I walk in the corporate office without fear, rocking my natural hair. Don't think you know me, I'm happy figured out yet. But even though I vote and pay into the system, falsifying ownership, and really most of us just rent, I am not an ally to the coonery. I will not support or propagate the coonery. I am aware my ancestors were more than slaves. I do not apologize for my blackness when I walk among the Brady. I know that you need more than you say with your lips. I know of your desires to see travel between my hips. But that watching is not for me. And while many of the colors my milk is not for sale or free, 300 plus years and you still may never see that everything seems is not what you believe. I have no need to argue about what no longer exists. You may walk in the darkness, your ignorance, but the game has changed, but the players are still the same. If you're thinking that we are winning, your education begins today. I will not apologize for my blackness. When whip cracks turn to jail bunk racks, three strikes take the light from the sea. Human dogs promoted to adults for the profit of modern day masters. Undercutting slave labor, they drive production from these 
free men while Lady Justice turns a blind eye. Who will defend? Shall we continue to pretend? The numbers increasing at a rapid pace. Yes, but will be best of the males of our race. I will not apologize for my blackness. I do not hide or make explanations. It's not a black thing, just proud of what makes me amazing. That my kid lives in me makes me divine and queenly. And no matter how many slave movies you produce, passages of legal ancestry are all that seduce my mind's eye. Somewhere in my memory was a jubilant shout aloud of someone saying, I'm black and I'm proud. Not sure when we silenced ourselves. Not sure when we became the meek. I just know I stand before you, not afraid to share and speak. I am not afraid of racism. I know prejudice means we are not really free. I know presidents, no matter their color, don't necessarily speak for me. I do not apologize for my blackness. I do not apologize for being me. There you go, sister. There you go. That good point. That was long as hell. I mean, sister, I feel like I was Sorry. watching. I was watching episodes of Roots in this motherfucker. But that was good, sister. Thank you so much for the call, young lady. Thank you so much. There you go. Absolutely. Okay. okay. That was a long-ass poem. I'm thinking she's about to just do something real quick. Shit. We just had the a million man marching. In the... <laughs> it's a tad bit long. Like next time y'all call up, y'all want to do a poem. Let's, let's, let's give me the, the cliff notes of your poem. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. My God. That sister had a lot on her mind. Shout out to Nikki G and Sean. Sean, I hope you hit that ass tonight and make her write another poem. <laughs> he bend me over, treat me like Rover. Hit that ass tonight so she can stop being so long-winded, Sean. Your lady is long-winded, brother. My God, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Hotep, brother. As my titties bounce, more bounce to the ounce. More titty than you can pronounce. On that dick I pounce. More bounce to the breast. Titty to the left. I mean, this sister was just going on and on. All right. All right, sister. There you go. Okay. <laughs> People call my show with poems. Y'all, what was the dude with the the rape poems? What was the dude? Y'all remember dude J something, the dude who used to call up and had these rapey ass poems. <laughs> the y'all know who the listeners of the show who's been listening for a minute about three years ago. What was that dude's name? Who used to call the sh Jay Slim? That's right, Jazzy knew. Yep, Jay Slim. This nigga used to have these poems. <laughs> these poems were creepy as hell. He's like, "Hey, Tariq, I got these. I got a book of poems, brother. I, I want to share my poems." I said, "All right, man. Let, let's hear some of your poems." And the, he he gave us like a website with the poems, and the poem was it was like. As I creep through her window, she can't see me. I hide behind a tree. I'm like, nigga, what kind of poem is this? <laughs> As I put my hand and cover her mouth, the screams cannot come out. I'm like, nigga, is this some kind of rape confession you doing? <laughs> he had a whole book of them crazy ass poems. I take the pillowcase, cover the pillow with your face. You cannot see me as I entry. <laughs> this nigga had a whole book of it. He was a dude from Atlanta. That nigga poems were creepy, man. Yeah, that nigga was, it was on some rape confession shit. As I climb down from your ceiling, I'm really getting the feeling that you were quite appealing. <laughs> like, shit, dude. These spoken felonies. I <laughs> know. Man. Jay Slim was creepy, man. <laughs> In the name of the poems were all funny. <laughs> 
the names of the poems were hilarious. Hey, Tariq, man. He was like a real soft-spoken dude with these crazy-ass poems, man. Like, hey, Tariq, man, I got a new poem, man. I want y'all to check out. I'm like, what's the name of the poem, man? <laughs> it's called Silent Screams. I'm like, Silent Screams? What the fuck is that? I don't, I don't even want to know what that shit is about, dude. I don't want to know what Silent Screams are about. Man. Yeah, they're going to use that. Yeah. That nigga, y'all keep an eye on that dude. With the silent screams poems. Yeah, Jay Slim was hilarious, man. It was a real dude. He was he was dead serious, too. He was dead ass serious, man. Because he called up the show one time. And he was like trying to. He was asking me about book publishing. He's like, hey, man, you know, Tariq. How'd you get into book publishing, man? I'm trying to get my books out. I said, well, you know, I, I got an audience for my books, you know, and I put my books out and, um, you know, we did a lot of promotion. So, you know, I had a, a, a there's an audience of people who wanted to hear dating and relationships. He's like, yeah, man, I'm trying to, I'm trying to self-publish some of my books, man. So like, what, what do you write about? I, I write poems, bro. I said, okay. Like what, what, what kind of poems? You know, poems about romance, <laughs> like romance. So, Ola said, as I locked the basement door. <laughs> uh, what's up, Ola? Everybody say what's up to Ola. Ola's in the house. <laughs> okay. Ola, find J Slim's page if y'all can. Anybody, if y'all can find J Slim's page, please find his page so people don't think we're making this up. This is a real dude with real fucking rapey ass poems. <laughs> As I rip you from the core, the buttons from your shirt hit the floor. Those panties are on the ground, hand over mouth, no one can hear a sound. I'm like, nigga, this ain't romantic. <laughs> this ain't romantic at all, Jay Slim. Something must have happened to Jay because he used to be on the, he used to call the show all the time and then all of a sudden we haven't heard from this nigga. So he might be somewhere in jail writing poems. As I look at my cellmate trying to stop this rape, my jailmate is on swole, tearing up my booty hole. <laughs> we got to send a kite out to Jay Slim. We got to send some out to the brother, man. Because <laughs> that nigga disappeared, so he must be in jail for something. I want people to find his website, man. Hold on, let me see if I can Google. Let me see if I can Google something real quick. J Slim Poems. J Slim. <laughs> J Slim was hilarious. J. Slim's poetry. All right, let me see. J. Wait, is this him? Hold on. Does he have a use? Wait, hold on. Does he have a YouTube channel? Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. Hey, what's good, everyone? This is your boy Jamal J. Slim Miller here again with another video blog. I haven't did one in a couple weeks. Oh, wait a minute. J. Slim has a. I didn't know J. Slim had a YouTube page. Hold on. We. Wait a minute. Side to side, hey. Hold on, wait. I'm going to do This is my first time seeing this. Hold on. So anyways, basically, um, I'm, this video blog is basically to um, try to, to promote my poetry, promote my book, promote my website. My website is www.jslimworld.com. Hold on. And J the book Slim. is called Blood for My Heart. <laughs> the link is on the website. It's a book of my poetry. Of, you know, I, have to uh, say I can't make this me. up, man. I can't. This nigga is blood from my heart. I, I can't make this up, man. <laughs> Hold on. Let me allow links, man. This is getting good. Oh. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> wait, wait. Uh, put the link on. Hold on. <laughs> 
I'm telling you, J Slim is real. This is a different take on poetry. It's basically poetry format with storytelling. Simple but deep. That's my motto. <laughs> Simple but deep. Anyways, you know, please check it out. Please support the book. And, you know, it's going to do big things. You know what I'm saying? This is just the beginning. Oh. Anyways, the point of this whole video part okay, come on, I want is to go share the inspiration that you've been hiding under okay. and all that stuff. And okay, let going? my faith manifest into greatness. The richest man in the world is my goal. Not with money. Yes, money is cool, but, but money will not free my mind. Free my mind of the ignorance. They feed my mind. Tell me I don't have the right to tell the truth. Hold on. Building my mind as a king like Solomon. Asking God to bless me with the knowledge. Hold on. He, he's, he's getting like, hold on. J. Slim Poetry, Women's Don't Look at I want the one. I want a poem about relationships. Slim Poetry, Women's Don't Look at I want a relationship poem from J. Slim. Hold on. The front. It's a funny website, and you must be a Christian. Not okay, shit. People, my New York guys or whatever. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm going through it. I'm, I'm going through this live as we speak. What's hold good, on. everyone? Blood from my heart. Hold on, hold on. So, wait, so this one's gonna be for the ladies. Uh oh, oh, it's for the ladies. So this one hold is on. not in blood from my heart. So, um, this is one I just wrote a couple of days ago, and it's called. The only beautiful that matters. Um, I don't have it memorized. You know what I'm saying? So This ain't from Blood From My Heart. I'm going to be reading off a piece of paper. I'm not even going to sit here and lie. But hopefully you enjoy it. Here we go. The only beautiful that matters. I know you hear this every day. But I think you're the most beautiful woman i ever seen. I want to give you the world. Your smile. Lights up my world. I know I have not told you this. I stay in the cut, looking at all the other men sweat you. You tell them thank you. I know they're just an afterthought. Nigga, that's called Jay. That's called stalking. <laughs> He's. <laughs> Y'all thought we were bullshitting about this dude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my nigga said I stay in the cut. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jay Slim, where are you, brother? <laughs> when you walk away. But I don't want to be an afterthought. I want to be your only thought. The one that makes your heart skip a beat. The one, when you think of me, a smile comes across your face. The one that can creates water between your thighs. <laughs> I'm done. I can't do no more, Jason. <laughs> ah! <laughs> My nigga said, I want to create water between your thighs. Oh, <laughs> uh, y'all get off, Jason. <laughs> Oh God, Jay Slim is hilarious. Oh. <laughs> Jay Slim is hilarious, man. I got we gotta get his book upon. Jay Slim, if you're out there, man, you gotta call the show, man. Hold on, this is one of who somebody this is one of his poems right here. Somebody posted up. This is one of the old ones. It's um I lay her on I'm, this is verbatim. I lay her on her back. Kissing her slowly, she gives a soft moan. She whispered to me, do as you will with me, as she slowly sucks my neck. I slowly makes my way down to her chest. I came to a stop at her breasts. 
which puts me to arrest. She pushed me over like a car that was in a wreck. <laughs> I'm not even making this up. <laughs> I swear I'm not making this up. This is what this, this is one of his poems. <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me read the rest. Hold on. I'm going to give y'all the link and I want y'all to read with me. Let me read. I want y'all to read so y'all don't think I'm making this up. Hold on. <sighs> hold on. This is his poem. Read. That's the. He it says too much rhyming. And <laughs> hold on. This is his poem. He said, wait. Do as you want with me. As I rise up, grab her by her dress with my sweaty hands. I rise her and find out she wet. I slowly pull down her dress and went straight to the test. Made my way down her narrow passage. She gave it to me louder. Body licking with sweat. She puts me to rest like a murderer does to his pest. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Jay Slim, where you at, man? <laughs> so he goes rights for Young Thug. <laughs> Jay Slim is that dude. Hold on. So when I call you beautiful, I will mean it. I want you to remember when I call you beautiful. So I will wait until my beautiful means something. When I call you beautiful, I want my beautiful to be the only one that matters. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me get my own self some snaps right now. Okay. I want, I want my beautiful to be the only one that matters, the only one that stays on your mind, the only one that really, really concerns you. You know what I'm saying? All the other beautifuls, whatever. But my beautiful, I want my beautiful to matter. Cause when I speak, I speak from the heart. Just like that poem is from the heart. I speak. All right, shout out to Jay Slim. He's a very passionate brother. Shout out to Jay Slim. My, Jay Slim probably got him easy to in jail or he done got him somebody to give him some pussy on a regular basis. So Jay Slim either got locked up or he done got him a, a, a wifey somewhere. And that nigga done got pussy whipped and gave up his poems. He then gave up his poetry. <laughs> I think Jay Slim probably got handcuffed. He's, he got him a little breezy somewhere. Shout out to brother Jay Slim. <laughs> but Jay used to call the show all the time, man. We used to clown so hard. Because Jay Slim is dead serious about them poems. But I think Jay Slim and got him some ass. Somebody then gave that nigga some ass. Man, but get my man's poems. Jason is funny. Get my man's poems. And, and don't forget, man, while we're here, since we got everybody in the room, let me give y'all the link for the crispy shirts. Y'all need to get them tonight. Everybody get your crispy t-shirts tonight. Y'all see that link? That's the link to get the crispy t-shirts. We got sweaters. We got t-shirts. We got t-shirts for women. T-shirts for men, we got jersey shirts, we got hooded shirts, sweatshirts. Get your crispy shirts tonight. You can even get them overnighted to you, ladies and gentlemen. Get your crispy shirts. And with your crispy shirts, when you get them, wear them, post a picture, and I'm going to put you on Instagram and my Facebook page. I'm going to put the you and your picture with your crispy shirts on Instagram and Facebook. I, I shot you out and, and hook you up. And um, everybody rock your crispy shirts. Real nice shirts. What up, everybody? You wanted the baseball shirts? There you go. There you go. <clears throat> Say every crispy shirt comes with a J Slim poem. <laughs> Hilarious. 
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Man, man, man. Anyway, y'all, my, my show is about to come on. I got to go watch my show, ladies and gentlemen. But we'll keep the music going right here on Tariq Radio, ladies and gentlemen. And you guys can talk among yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. We'll keep the music going and all that good stuff. And y'all talk among yourselves. But I got to get my Walking Dead on. I got to watch that and everything. It's been real. Go check out Jay Slim's poems if you can find them, ladies and gentlemen. Man, man, man. And don't forget to go to TariqElite.com to get that gear. <clears throat> go to TariqRadio.com to get all the um, episodes of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Go to HiddenColorsFilm.com to check out Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3. Get that, HiddenColorsFilm.com. And don't forget to go to um, King Flex Entertainment. You can see all the movies that uh, we're, we're doing. We got some other stuff going on in the works. We got some other things we're working on, ladies and gentlemen. And again, don't go nowhere. We're going to keep the music going right here on Tariq Elite Radio. We're going to keep the music popping tonight. And don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> 